Hey everyone, welcome back. This video is part two of this little series where I'm analyzing Nick Johnson's music. So if you haven't seen part one, click the link down in the description. And just like in part one, everything this video is transposed half step down. Today I want to talk about a specific section of the last song from Remarkably Human, a Sick and Injured Brain. This is one of my favorite songs of the album. It's amazing. And there is this one part of the song that goes like this. Here Nick is using something called a whole tone scale. For those of you who don't know, the structure of a whole tone scale is just all whole tones. It has no semitones. So if our first note is C, then we move one whole step to D, another whole step to E, another whole step to F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and then back to C. As you can see, this scale only has six notes. It is also perfectly symmetrical, and since the distances between all the notes are the same, your ear can distinguish where is the tonal center. This is why this scale is generally used by composers to give listeners a sensation of mystery and wonder. You can hear this scale in hundreds of movies. It's very common in fantasy games and movies. Also, it only has augmented chords. This is another reason why this scale has this very strange feeling. So Nick is starting the scale on E. And he's playing one octave of the scale in descending motion. You can really hear how Nick takes a lot of inspiration from film scores. That's why many of us use words like cinematic to describe his music. Another classical Hollywood technique he uses is called chromatic mediant. I'll talk about this more in depth in a future video, but this is pretty much a form of modal interchange. We talked about modal interchange in part one, so again, if you haven't seen it, go watch that first. A very simple way to look at chromatic mediants is playing a chord and then moving it by thirds. The name chromatic mediant comes from the distance between the roots of the chords. If we are in the key of C major, our mediant is the third, E minor. And the submediant is the sixth, A minor. So the mediant is a major third away from C and the submediant is a minor third away from C in the opposite direction. However, they become chromatic when we use notes outside of the key to alter the chords. So again, if we are in C major, we can move this chord a major or a minor third in either direction to have a chromatic median. So for example, let's use major thirds. A major third above C, we have E. So we just have to play two major chords. First C, and then E major. And that already gives you that very heroic sound. And E major is not in C major. It should be minor. That's why it's chromatic, because we're adding that chromatic note that is not in C major. And you can simply keep moving by thirds like that. So if we move a major third down, we have A flat major. We can also move by minor thirds. A minor third above C, we have E flat. That is C major to E flat major. And a minor third below C, we have A. So that would be C major to A major.
And you can do the same with minor chords. If you have C minor, you can move a minor third in either direction to E flat minor. Or to A minor. Or you can move by minor thirds. In this case, that would be C minor to E minor. And a major third down, so C minor to A flat minor. I have a few links down in the description so that you can go and look at more resources that go more in depth about this. So the next example comes from the song In the Mouth of the Wolf from his last album, White Eyes in the Dark. So let's take a look at what Nick is doing here. The first chord is G minor. And then Nick goes out of key right away, of course. He's moving down a major third to E flat. And he plays another minor chord, E flat minor. Which is not in the key of G minor. And together they sound like this. And the extensions that he's adding to these chords are very interesting too. On top of G minor, he's adding a ninth. which is a very tense interval already. And on top of the E flat minor chord, he's adding a major seventh, which is even more tense. And that tension gets resolved in a very interesting way when that note stays the same, and then it turns into the fifth when you go back to the G minor. Nick is using every single trick he can to make this single chord change the most dramatic and obscure he possibly can. He's taking a chromatic median that already sounds pretty dramatic and then he's adding the most tense intervals he possibly can on top of that. And he makes it all work because he is a master, he's an amazing composer. There is so much to learn in his music, I really encourage you all to listen to his work and really try to figure out what is going on there musically. Is there going to be a part three? I don't know. <laughs> These videos are really hard to make. But if you have any more songs in mind, please leave them down in the comments. And if you would like me to analyze any other artists, like maybe Pliny, I, I would love to make a Pliny episode. If you would like to see that too, tell me in the comments. And that's all I have for you today. For those of you who don't know, my video editing class is now live on Skillshare. In this class, you'll learn everything you need to know to edit videos using DaVinci Resolve, which is a free professional video editing software. This class was made with beginners in mind, so if you've never edited a video before, this is a great place to start. Click the link down in the description to get 14 days of Skillshare Premium for free. I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.